Welcome back, guys. Now, this is going to be the last um, couple chapters that we're going to be looking at for this week. And then you guys have your first test. It's going to be chapters 1 through 7 plus 12. So that's a total of 8 chapters that you guys are responsible for. Total questions, 50. Um, but anyways, before we get to, well, before we get on with that... Today, we're going to be learning about chapter 5 and chapter 6. Now, chapter 5, as you can see, it's only 20 pages long. So, it's a very, 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 very short read. And um, chapter 6 is just as short as well because even though it looks long, the content on there is pretty much rinse and repeat. So, with that being said, let's get started with chapter 5, which is dealing with bank reconciliation. So, as you guys remember from the accounting class, we dealt with bank reconciliations, okay? And instead of being as super complex as you guys think it is, it, this one makes bank reconciliation look 10 times easier. All right, so... Um, with that being said, um, so first off is going to be reconciling bank accounts. You can actually, in, in QuickBooks, you can actually reconcile pretty much any account that has a register. Okay, so meaning, for example, you can do your bank account, you can do your accounts receivable, you can do um, any current liabilities, and so on and so forth, and you can, all, you can also do your owner's equity if you need to. Now, of course, the most common ones usually typically are going to be your bank um, account or even a credit card account, just because the one thing that you need to have in order to complete a um, reconciliation is you do actually need some physical form of a statement. Um, and as we all know, um, for banks, you definitely will get a statement every month. And same thing with a credit card, you will definitely get a um, credit card statement, okay? So any liabilities that are current, so let's say if you own a loan, you're more likely to get a monthly bill as well. So that's something that you can reconcile as well. But for the purpose of this class, we are only focusing on two kinds of reconcil reconciliations, and that's going to be the bank statement or the bank account and the credit card state credit card uh, account. So with that being said, of course, we are going to be looking at this wonderful um, uh, bank statement on page 144. So this is what you're going to be primarily needing to collect before even completing a bank reconciliation. Also, oftentimes, what's actually really going to happen is that Bank reconciliation don't happen at the very, very end of the day because you're not going to receive a bank statement at the end of the month, right? Usually it, it, it comes like a little couple days after, right? Because it's producing and it's making sure that these are all the transactions that has happened. So typically bank uh, reconciliations don't happen exactly on the 31st. Um, usually happens again two or days, three days after. Uh, because remember, if we're on the 31st, what if you write a check? Obviously, you already know the bank is never, not, definitely not going to clear it and you didn't even deposit in the bank in the first place. So that is exactly why usually bank reconciliations, um, the statement date is going to say it's for January 31st, but you're going to actually going to do the reconciliation a couple days after. Now, after it's been exactly um, your uh, time to do the bank reconciliation, because the number one thing that you want to also do is that in a timely manner, if you could obtain your bank statement as soon as the first, because the first thing that you want to make sure is that when you start the next month, that you're starting off with, um, you know, a reconciled amount. So that's why uh, it's a very important that if you are planning to do this, you want to try to get the most 
um, you know, recent bank statement as soon as the day, the last day is over. So as you can see, typical statement should have your beginning balance of what you started with, and then it gives you all your transactions that you've done, um, such as writing your checks out, and also uh, maybe deposits that you've made. And then it gives you an ending balance right here. Um, and then on the side, you should have other things such as things that were charged to your account, such as interest, or even things that you've um, encountered, such as service fees, and et cetera. And I should also give you a list of all of your um, checks that you've written and deposits that you've made. So pretty straightforward as we've looked before in accounting, the um, typical bank statement should look more or less something like this, okay? And again, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into QuickBooks and see how easy um, doing a bank reconciliation is. So of course, it's going to be on your banking and you have this little reconcile button right here, all right? Alternatively, you also have the banking um, uh, on the menu bar um, and you can be able to um, reconcile as well. Uh, you can bring it reconcile, okay? So by clicking that, first things first is you need to make sure which accounts you are actually reconciling, okay? So here's a little drop-down menu, and it gives you all the accounts that you can reconcile, right? Because we talked about this. You can reconcile any current assets, any other assets, fixed assets, any current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and your equity accounts. The only one that you cannot ever um, do is your expense accounts and your income accounts because you're, um, there's, there's not really much that you can reconcile, right? Especially when you're already kind of reconciling as you go by doing the sales process, right? Uh, collecting all the sales receipts. So there's not really a real... Um, type of measurement that you can utilize because at the end of each month, what happens is you get rid of those transactions so you don't really, you don't really need to keep track or have to make sure that these transactions go through. They've, they've already gone through, okay? So number one thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're in your checking account and here is as simple as is, okay? First thing you do is you're gonna fill it out just like a form. Fill out from top to bottom. So when is this bank reconciliation being done? It is done for the end of January. So January 31st, here you go, of 2019. So again, you can actually do this at any given time. Just make sure you toggle the date and make sure that you're correcting the correct um, date on there. Okay. First things first is you want to always double confirm that your beginning balances in your bank account and your bank statement is the same. So here is it $14,384. And let's go ahead and compare. My beginning balance was indeed $14,384.50. So that right there, it means that we're starting off on a good note. Now, um, they do, as you go continue reading the book, that's the first thing you should always check because if you, if it does not, uh, if they are not even or they're a little off, um, there's a few reasons why your uh, next reconciliation could cause you to also be off balance as well. If, you're, uh, if they do match, then that's a good sign because when you complete your reconciliation, your only mistake is going to be within this current uh, bank reconciliation. But for those that if you do have an error where you, the, the numbers don't match, unfortunately, you're going to have to undo the reconciliation and you're going to have to dive in to the previous one's uh, reconciliation and figure if there was some kind of discrepancy, whether maybe on in January um, someone decided to uh, to write you a faulty check and it bounced in February or January. OK, 
Okay, so you're gonna be you, that. That's one way that you can know that you have um, some kind of discrepancy within your transactions, and you're gonna have to actually go locate it. But for now, let's go ahead and just go through the example. So first things first, my um, beginning balances do match, and I can go ahead and proceed to the next one. So the next one is going to be, well, what should your bank account reflect? All right, and that's where you're gonna go ahead and go into your bank and say, well, it should reflect the total of $5,424.92. Because that's what the bank statement says. So how you're gonna be doing this is that you're gonna make sure that at the end of the day, your bank statement is the same as your, um, I mean, your bank, your bank account in your QuickBooks is in fact going to reflect the five thousand four hundred twenty-four dollars and ninety-two cents. And if not, you need to find where that missing check is, or maybe you forgot to deposit some money. For whatever reason, it is that is going to uh, be where um, you need to find that discrepancy. Okay. Um. But they do also say before even checking or um, when you start out doing your bank reconciliation, also before you prepare it and whatnot, uh, make sure that this is done towards the end of the day or it could be the first thing that you do on the very first morning or et cetera, et cetera. Or if you do do that, make sure there is no transaction in between. You want to make sure that all of your deposits and all of your checks that you've written have cleared the deposit section. Um, you know, you want to make sure that everything is cleared before comes starting your bank reconciliation. Okay, so there you go. Boom, I put my ending balance should equal to my 54.2492. And now I'm going to fill out the next section below. So the next section is asking me, well, what are things that are going to be commonly, um, you know, on your bank statement? So what service charges have you been charged? So in this case, um, if I go into my bank statement, right, under service charges, I was actually charged on January 31st a total of $10 for service charges okay so i can go ahead and place that information in here so ten dollars and um it's going to be made on the 31st and now i need to find some um bank account that is associated with this usually it's going to be a bank service fee um just exactly how it's titled bank service fee or bank service charges boom and number one thing that you also want need to know is class is very important when it you're especially when you've established some kind of trend. If you started a trail of transactions and you actually classified every single one of them, it's very important that you be consistent and also track this one as well. Since this is a bank account, not only are you dealing with um, San Jose and Walnut Creek customers. Um, we've created one that's kind of universal or that kind of doesn't affect any, it doesn't affect um, the other two um, types of income or expenses. And even though this isn't really an income or expense, it's definitely a transaction you wanna keep track of. So in this case, this one's going to be overhead. Overhead, again, is a generic class that you can, you can um, place in that doesn't affect San Jose or Walnut Creek. It's pretty much ge geared towards for general um, transactions. Okay, boom. All right. Now the next section is: Was there any interest that was collected? So when we learned in accounting, there's interest that you can collect, and there's also interest that could be charged. Now remember, um, when we're looking at interest income. It's a liability. It doesn't show up on your. Um, it doesn't show up on your bank statement per se. It would show that's something that shows up on a credit card statement. So don't confuse the two because we're talking about two different accounts here. 
one's a, uh, your asset and one's a liability. The only interest that you would be looking at in a bank reconciliation is collecting interest, okay? So for any reasons such as if you have, if you charge your customers, if they do an electronic funds transfer, right? You can tack on an additional, um, what's called a convenience charge where you can up the price by five or ten dollars. It doesn't. It depends on what it is, or it could be a certain percentage of um, your of their sales. So in this case, this one's kind of um, vague. It doesn't really tell us what this interest that we've collected for. But let's go ahead and look and match it onto our bank account. So here we are under interest under um, January 31st. We have interest earned and it's for a total of $8.62. So this is earned in this is earned income. Okay. So we've earned a total of $8.62 um, on January 31st. And this account is going to be interest income. Okay, right? This is earned. Um, and then lastly, again, we're going to also apply another overhead um, transaction for this one because it's not dealing with either locations of stores. It's dealing with um, the overall general um, company itself. Okay. Once I'm here and I've finished filling out my form, the next section is I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Once I hit the continue button, you're going to get this list of all the transactions that exist. But now, before I talk about the top part, let's talk about the bottom part. Bottom part says that here, this is your beginning balance, right? And then here's going to be how many deposits that you've done and how many payments you have done. And then on the uh, right side here, it is going to pretty much track every single item you are going to check mark off to confirm that this has cleared. And by doing so, as you can see, it says here that we've already charged this, uh, this could be the uh, service charge. We've already added the interest income. So right now your ending balance right now, is, this is what we're, our goal is. The discrepancy or the difference between it it is still that we still have $14,383 left to clear. Or I'm sorry, the beginning balance is going to be the $14,383. What we have left to clear is this $8,958.20. So that's how much left we have to clear in order to uh, be successful or get a good bank reconciliation out of it. Our end goal is to make sure that this reflects as zero, okay? If it doesn't, then you have to go locate that um, discrepancy. And we'll talk about that, in, we'll talk about that uh, when we complete our first uh, bank reconciliation, okay? So now we can go ahead and talk about the top part. So the top part is actually going to give you a list of every single transaction um, from your last bank reconciliation. So as you can see, um, you have something, some a few transactions that were left behind uh, from December. But usually, again, um, especially if you have it towards the end of December, it's going to roll over in January, right? And then here, if you keep going through, we have a few January transactions. And then boom, we have a few February transactions. Okay, so this is assuming that we are looking at this and we're completing it after January 31st, which is accurate. It's correct. You're supposed to do it because you can't do it on the 31st. There's no way that the bank, the bank statement is going to be produced and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So by looking at this, there are ways that you can toggle to kind of show um, uh, what necessary things that you want to see on here. So. At the very top here, you have this little check option that allows you to hide any transactions that happen after the bank reconciliation date, which in fact is January 31st. So if I, by clicking this, I can hide all my um, February transactions because at the end of the day, I'm reconciling for January. February has nothing to do with it yet, okay? So 
that is what you can do. And of course, um, it's going to pull up everything that happened prior to uh, the reconciliation date. Okay, so by going ahead and looking at this now, this is where we start comparing our bank statement to the QuickBooks. So this is where you're gonna need your you should ide uh, like ideally have the bank statement separately, and you're just comparing it onto your screen. But um, so we're gonna go ahead and look at our checks that have cleared, and then we're gonna check our deposits that have cleared. So let's go ahead and compare our um, bank statement. So here is going to be where our checks um, lie. So the first check that cleared is going to be my uh, check number 325, okay? I have check 326, check 327, uh, check 6001, 6,003 and 6,004. Here you go. As just looking at this, I've already identified that I'm missing check number 602, but we can talk about that later. Okay. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and go into my um, bank reconciliation window and I'm going to go ahead and click and check mark off the ones that I saw on my bank statement. So here we saw that check number 325 was there, 326 was there, 327 was there, 6001, 6003, and 6004 was indeed there. Okay, so for this one, um, you can check all of them if you'd like, if it's easier that way. But again, the whole purpose of a bank reconciliation is to just make sure that you, you um, do um, recognize that all of these things have cleared. Now, notice this. There's, there's, um, yeah, just notice that the, all these checks, well, I mean, they are there. Um, but um, I'm going to actually wait. Uh, yeah, so, um, but in this case, um, I want to go ahead and go through each and every single one just so that I can double confirm but also verify this because I still have a few things that I haven't, um, I haven't cleared out yet. I, ha I, don't, I didn't see a check 328, and then I have a non-check number here, okay? So these ones are for surely on there. All right, now let's go ahead and review what happened at the bottom. Now I am still outstanding $4,000, $4,622. So I have this much amount to keep on clearing, okay? So now we've done, we've looked at that. Our next thing that we're going to be looking is going to be our deposits. Our deposits is going to be up here. So we have a total of three deposits, okay, we, um, so three deposits, okay, so we, there's no deposit number on them, which, you know, we all know banks give you deposit numbers, so that's kind of weird, but anyways, it shows you, uh, what day that you, uh, deposit it and how much you deposit it for, so we'll just verify it through the number itself, so we got 249, we got 1900 and we got 1100 okay giving me a grand total of $3377 in deposits so now we're going to go back to our bank reconciliation window and we're going to go ahead and click did we have a deposit for the of 1900 yes we did did we also have a deposit for the 249 Yes, we did. And lastly, did we have a deposit for our 1100 Yes, we did. Okay, so now I'm going to go back down to my window, and now I am, I am missing $8,000. Okay, now here, if I look carefully on my screen here, I notice that I do have an $8,000 check. Okay, but... Let's go ahead and double confirm on our bank statement that that truly did exist. 
So let's go ahead and look. And anywhere on there, do you see、uh, a eight thousand dollar transaction anywhere on your bank statement? Yes, it's indeed. We actually had a withdrawal. Uh, but it was actually a transfer, an EFT transfer. So someone had actually,、um, I, or I'm sorry, I had actually, or the company, sorry, had actually transferred a total of eight thousand dollars. Okay, so this was a withdrawal, and it was a payment done. So eight thousand dollars is indeed exactly what、um, I need to、um, check off. So here you go. I'm gonna follow this line. Boom! I checked, marked that off, and once I've done that, now let's look. My discrepancy is now zero. So that means I completed my bank reconciliation accurately, and that's all it took. All you had to do was compare your statement, check mark whatever is there. Boom! And I can go ahead and click the reconcile now. Okay, so there you go. Reconcile now. Once I do that and press this button,、um, as you can see, I'm gonna get this window, and it says, "Okay, thank you for completing, or you've completed your、uh, bank reconciliation for this month." I'm gonna click OK, and what's gonna happen is two reports are gonna show up. Oh, I mean. You're gonna get this window that's gonna ask you, would you like to see a summary report of your bank reconciliation or a detailed report on your、um, bank reconciliation, or you want to see both? Now, in this case, I want to see I want to see both. Okay, so here you go. Here's my.、Uh, I'm gonna click that. Okay,、um, so here's my summary one. Okay, pretty much in detail of what I just did. I made all these deposits and all that stuff, and then you can choose to print this out, or you can choose to、um, close it. Okay, and then here's my uh, my uh, detailed report. Okay, all right, my bank reconciliation. So pretty much, it gives us a comparison of from the previous one to now. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that window now. If you ever ever want to just look at a bank reconciliation, or let's say you didn't actually, or you you just closed one of them, you can always get that report、uh, by going to reports and、um, clicking on、uh, banking. Banking, and then right here you're able to see your um, previous. Um, Reconciliation,、um, disc、uh, reconciliation. Like you can actually see the actual report. So here's the details and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So you have it all there. Now, here is something that you guys need to know, because it's all it's very important that you do know this. Okay. So for two thousand, I'm sorry. For the different types of versions that you can have for QuickBooks, right? We have the Pro version, Premier, Enterprise, Accountant, all those, all those jazz. The only one, which is Pro, can only do one bank reconciliation at a time. Meaning, once I've completed this, I can only view. The bank reconciliation for just January. Okay. Now, for any for other programs, right? If you are kind of looking into keeping a collection or keeping a record, the most you can go back as far as how the the you know as many as ten months ago bank reconciliation. But for Pro, you can only have. The current and the the last months, okay, which is the current one, right? Because、uh, bank reconciliations happen at the end of the year, at the end of the month. So there you go. I can only see my January one. I cannot see my my December one, okay. Um. So that is a、um, rule of thumb there, just so then you can consider which one, which、uh, QuickBooks is actually going to benefit you. In the long run,、um, uh, Premier does 
is a mix between pro and enterprise, right? You get just enough, uh, and you get a little more. But pro, you get just get, it's enough to get you by, okay? So with that being said, that means I can't pull up any other reports or anything that the, that I can uh, that others can see. But again, especially if you are the accountant, you uh, may be the person. Um, uh, I I it depends on what your position is. If you are in charge of bank reconciliations, um, I know that general accountants they actually um, some do, some don't. It could be a um, someone who's in charge of uh, uh, accounts receivable, they are in charge of the banking section. So um, it just really depends on what your position is and whether it's necessary for you to keep track of your records or if you need to have those kind of records uh, be placed there. So you can always open up the report at any given time on your bank reconciliation through there, okay? So now that that we've completed the first round which is actually um successfully completing our um bank reconciliation here's one notion that i also need to show you too well what happens if uh if i started my reconciliation and i ended up missing that eight thousand dollars okay so we're gonna do hypotheticals now so if for any cases that you do have a discrepancy, what's going to happen is that um, you're going to actually uh, you're going to actually have a few options that you can do in here. Um, one of the options is as you uh, are processing your uh, bank reconciliation, um, if you guys remember, so um, I'll, I'll show you in a second. Uh, when you process the uh, bank reconciliation, you can modify it at any given time, okay? Uh, and then the second option is to actually go ahead and click the undo last reconciliation. Now, undoing the last reconciliation is basically, it's not going to make you go back to square one uh, because you've completed it the first time. The undoing the... Um, last bank reconciliation is only going to undo you clearing out all your checks and it's going to undo clearing out all of those other extra um uh, the deposits and whatnot but it's still going to automate it's still going to record that you've already incurred the income interest and the um and the the uh, bank service charge. That's already going to be there even if you undo the last um, reconciliation, which I'm gonna go ahead and do because I'm just gonna show you for class purposes only. So once you've done this button here, now it's gonna say, are you sure you want to do this? And, and if you do, then you're gonna, continue, you're gonna click continue. And then it's gonna tell you pretty much saying that, just know that your, um, your amounts are going to reflect like this, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna click continue. So here you go, I get this little error message or you know, reminder message, okay, I'm gonna click okay. And now my bank reconciliation is, 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 is starting from square one, okay? Now with all that stuff in here, um, they do recommend you that if you are starting from square one, what's gonna happen is as you can see, um, we need to change the date to uh, January 31st, okay, um, January 31st, okay, so now my, now it's saying that my uh, ending balance uh, or my beginning balance should be this much. I should have um, undone, I, I did, I, I should have undone, undo the action figure. Let me, let me, let me clear out this um, thing right here and see if I can do it again. Reconcile. Okay, there you go. So now it's refreshed, and now on January 31st, my beginning balance should have been $14,383, which is exactly what we started with, okay? Um, and we want to make it to be 
okay? Because these things have already been entered in again, there's no purpose to point to have to redo it again. It's already been marked and it's already been calculated. So by pressing continue, what you're gonna notice is now here is where the um, bank fees and the interest collected is going to appear. So here you go, my service charge uh, for $10 has already, it's already in place. So that's what I meant by um, making sure that when you do click that undo, um, that undo uh, bank reconciliation, know that those transactions have already cleared and by undoing it, you're not, you, you don't need to redo it again. All right, so again, um, this is what I was talking about. When you get to this window and you have this huge discrepancy, you have this little button here that says to modify. When you click this modify button, it's gonna actually take you back to this window right here. And what's gonna happen is that you can click this locate discrepancy, all right? And what you're gonna do is this is where you're gonna actually um, run a report to find any discrepancies that are currently laying in your um, bank account. So by doing this, okay, just so I'm gonna run my discrepancy report, okay? And because um, this is gonna happen, and I also have to make sure I place the correct dates in here. So making sure that this is from January, January 1st all the way to January um, 31st of 2019. All right, and I click that refresh button. Okay, so it shows to me that I don't have a, a single discrepancy in here. Um, but I should, I should have that error message showing me for, um, for that 6,002 oh, 6, check is missing. So let me see if I can go back and see if I have to go back further. Okay, so it says I don't have any discrepancies here, which is true because our bank reconciliation actually was fine. There was no discrepancy. So usually if you do have one, what you're gonna happen is it's gonna pull up anything that seems weird. So for example, that one check that told you that was missing, that 6,002 is missing. Um, but let me go ahead and do that. So that's what happens when you run a discrepancy report. It should actually populate something that is indeed going to be um, something that's going to affect your bank reconciliation. So again, for that purpose of that reason, of course, I don't have an actual discrepancy, so it's not gonna appear anything. But usually that's what's gonna happen and you run it on the date that you're running the report for and it will populate something that you, that is kind of weird, okay? Um, oh, no, cancel. All right, so there you go. You can run a um, discrepancy report. You can even run uh, a previous report or view the previous reports. But again, I, I can't do that. Um, I can only do the most current one and et cetera, et cetera. So then there's a lot of things that you can do. So then again, you could also do again another um, undo reconciliation. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. So. My dis I'm gonna go ahead and select everything as well. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, not the not the the 328. Okay. And um not this 300. Um, and the deposits, again, we're gonna collect select every single one because it's also including that. Um, thing there. So I'm still off by $406. Let me go look for which one I didn't check. So I didn't check these two. One and there you go. And then now my thing, it shows up as zero and I'm going to go ahead and save and
close. So that's doing the, the reconciliation twice again. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to click close. And then my reports, whether I choose to display the reports or not, I can just close them. Okay. So that is dealing with bank reconciliation. So this one, they were nice enough to uh, make it so um, you don't have to look or locate that discrepancy. But in the book, it kind of gives you like a fictitious like scenario of the, if you do locate it, this is what you got to do. You got to either um, recognize that's a voided check or enter in the amount for that voided check, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's dealing with uh, finding those errors in your bank reconciliation. But other than that, that's that's it for bank reconciliation. I mean, um, other than that, we're going to probably complete the next one, which is going to be, um, which is going to be, well, what happens if someone writes a bounce check and you've already completed your bank reconciliation, but they decided to write you a bounce check. So what do you do with that kind of, um, what do you do with that? Okay. So of course, when you, when you actually submit a bounced check to your bank, what's going to happen is your bank's going to be either, um, understated because the bank recognized that you were supposed to deposit money, but it didn't clear because the person, it, it, the person who wrote the check didn't have enough money in their bank account. So what's going to happen is that the bank is going to charge you money and is also going to charge and um, so on and so forth because you're the one who deposited a faulty check. So um, what you're going to do is after you've discovered that you have a faulty check in the in your bank reconciliation, right, it should appear um on there okay and what you're going to do is you're going to attempt to bill your customer again for um either um the same bill but with an additional fee tacked on top of it for for uh you know sending a faulty check all right so instead of talking let's go ahead and dive into this exercise right here so mr bob mason our very 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 friendly friend over here decided to write us a check to pay for his um to pay for his items but what happens is that he actually wrote us a bounced check or it he didn't have enough money in his account so um he so we're going to go ahead and look at it and uh um verify that he has not uh, or what you would call it, that he, that the bank bounced the check and charged us money. So now we're going to have to notify him that, hey, you sent me a bad check. So I'm going to charge you money and I'm going to send you a new invoice tacking on that extra fee because you, you, you know, it was an inconvenience charge to me. All right. And it wasn't my fault. So in this case, I'm gonna, I, like I said, I, I'm gonna go to Bob Mason and I'm gonna go ahead and view all of his transactions, okay? Once I've done that, I see this bill payment right here for 20, for the check number 20, 2526. I'm gonna go ahead and double tap that, okay? Now what I notice in this bill payment is that he, he wrote me a check for the $1177. Okay, and that check did in fact clear already. So then now I'm gonna go ahead and record that this person actually wrote me a faulty check. He was attempting to try to pay two invoices at once and the bounce, the, the bounce, the check had actually bounced instead. So what you're gonna do is at the very top of the customer payment window, you're gonna have the record bounce check option. And that's probably that's gonna probably be the only way that you can actually record a bounce check because it doesn't really happen as often as you would think it would um, or it's not like a major transaction 
that you're not your your whole purpose isn't to record a bounce check every single time. Your main purpose is to just record the customer payment. So again, this is going to be an option that's going to be only found on the customer payment window. So again, record bounced check. Once you've done that, now it's going to ask you a few questions. First things first is, well, first off, how did how much did the bank charge you? In this case, the bank charged me $10. So that was the service fee that I was charged for, okay? And then when, uh, what date did it charge me on? It charged me on the 31st. So let me go ahead and change that. 31st of um, thirty first of January. Okay. And then next thing is now I'm gonna it's gonna ask me, well, um, and I placed it, where did you place this amount? You placed it in your bank service charges. And what class does it belong to? Um I think this one uh, I think this one is, is it San Jose or is it overhead? It's overhead. Okay. Yes. Okay. Overhead. All right. Now here's the question that, uh, uh, that we get to have fun with. How much are you going to charge him? to cover the bank fee and also profit on it. Because again, this is where you can charge him whatever amount because he attempted to pay money, but it, it bounced and now you're getting charged because of his, um, his fault, right? So this is where you can have a little fun. Now don't be too over, oh, you know, overwhelming. Don't be charging like a ridiculous amount because it's just a simple check. So in this case, um, I would have charged 50 because um, $10 for a bounce check in today's time is, is probably not true. It's probably going to be anywhere from $30. So you can actually charge um, a higher amount um, gener uh, and you can determine whatever money amount you want. But in this case, I'm going to be nice. Um, I'm going to say, well, since they charged me $10, I'm only going to charge him 20 So at least I profit $10 out of it, right? And that's going to go towards his actual accounts receivable. So that's actually going to go into my profits, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and click next, okay? So this is just double confirming that everything that you entered in is correct. And I'm going to go ahead and click finish. So once I get that beep of approval, now my customer payment has increased for Mr. Bob Mason. As you see, I just tacked on that new um, $20 fee right there, okay? There he is, so now he owes me in grand total um, $11.97.86. So as you can see, there's the tack on, and what happens is the invoice what happens to the invoice is it reverts back and saying that you he still owes his invoice because the bounce check, what it does is it's pretty much like a voided check. It revitalizes the um, amount that this person owes us or it, it, re, it, re, it undoes the payment and revives the, um, the actual invoice. So here you go. That is that. Okay, so now that Mr. Bob Mason has recognized that we recorded a bounce check, if you go into his payment little window, you can see that there is a message saying bounce check right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this again because what happens is now Mr. Bob Mason decides a couple days later say, okay, I sent you a brand new check. So I'm going to go ahead and do my receive payments for Mr. Bob Mason. There you go. And now um, I'm going to go ahead and select the invoices that he's paying for because he did, in fact, pay for both invoices. He paid for both invoices. Okay, what's going on? Um, you cannot apply an amount greater than 
Uh, the total amount. Oh, okay. Well, I guess this one won't allow me. So, uh, he does, he did one, one, 97, 86. Okay. Um, and he paid with a check and I believe this is check number 25, 38, I think. And he's not going to pay us on the 31st. He's actually going to pay us a couple days after. So, cause he's, uh, he's probably going to, uh, Say that again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, he paid on 210. Good. So again, he wrote us a new check for the amount that included that extra fee. So not only does that cover our charges that we got charged from the bank for, but it also gives us money in our pocket as well because we charged him a convenience fee. So this is extra income I'm getting from this person for their mistake. Okay. And once I've done that, everything looks good. Everything looks good. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. So now I have a new check payment, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So again, um, yeah. So when you have a when you have someone who wrote a bounce check, that's what generally would happen is that you're gonna record it, and then you're gonna charge him. Um, an additional fee on top of that, okay? Then the next section here is, well, what if you wrote the bad check, okay? So if you wrote um, an NSF check, here are a few things that you can do to, um, to kind of get that uh, cleared away. Uh, but before that, actually, let me go back to the customer one. Generally, rule of thumb as a good business practice is that you are going to notify Mr. Bob Mason, okay? So once that check has been bounced, your job is to send him another bill, okay? Um, or you can even contact him. But rule of thumb is you want to make sure that when you are charging a customer for something random as a bank service charge because of an NSF check, you need to report to the customer. They need to know what they did wrong and um, they need to, it, it, it's a transaction that has to be recorded. So here we need to send out and notify Bill, Bob Mason um, and that we are telling him that because of this inconvenience, I'm going to charge you an additional $20 on top of what you owe. So that means his bill statement is going to, it's going to, it's going to tell him that he no longer owes 1177. He owes now 1197. All right. Plus the, um, the little fee on top of that. So again, you are going to be sending a brand, either a brand new invoice that has the separate, um, bank service charge, or you're going to actually modify um, an invoice um, tacking on that extra invoice. Now, in this case, um, uh, QuickBooks has already associated it's going to be a separate invoice, which again, you um, it's generally going to be uh, because it doesn't have to be in particularly for that invoice because he paid for two invoices. So in this one, you're just going to bill him a separate invoice um, with that separate charge, okay? And he will get notified. So with that being said, if by us doing that kind of um, gesture for a customer, you can expect the same thing for on our end too. If we were the ones who wrote the NSF check, we are also responsible to also let our vendor know, okay, what are the things that you can do? Um, and here are a few options here. Yes, you can go and say, hey, um, wait up, let me put money in my bank. Okay, now you can go ahead and uh, redeposit the check again. Now, of course, um, what's really bad about that is sometimes when you deposit money, it doesn't go in right away. So if they deposit that, that check in, they can be double fined for re-entering another bounced check. So general rule of thumb that you should do and it's good business practice is what you're going to do is you're going to void the check. So call your bank, void the check that you sent out already, and basically send a brand new check upon receiving the, the, a new statement or a new invoice, okay? Because you need to know how much you're going to have to pay extra, 
Okay, so that is rule of thumb. Now, what you uh, that you just send a brand new check regardless of what it is. Okay, so those are this the necessary steps that you need to take in order to go ahead and clear that. Okay. So any questions in regards to recording a bank a, a bounce check or actually writing a bounce check? No. Okay. Um, again, no. it's not as common. Um, it, or it's not a uh, what do you call it? It's not the main focus of a tra of a, a, a customer payment transaction. So there's not many ways that in order to get there. The best way to get there is going through the customer payment itself and click that bounce check option. Okay. So the next one I'm going to be talking about is going to be indeed recording a credit card um, bank reconciliation. Now, of course, we talked about this, right? Common ones that you see would be a bank reconciliation or a credit card um, a reconciliation because you're always going to have a monthly statement at every uh, given to you every single month. So as we see here on page 156, we got the we got a credit card um, statement right here. It gives us a list of all of our transactions plus the interest that has been um, tacked on to there as well as other stuff here as well, such as my transactions I've occurred, right? Here, I made a payment, right? I have a thank you message right here. I made a payment for the $2,000 and $2,152, okay? And other things too is I've charged my account twice, okay? I charged it for 138, well, sorry, 133, and an additional $35, okay? At the bottom, pretty much breaks down how much interest is actually um, that you're going to be collecting on this. So finance charges. So I got charged $16.11 of interest. It's bringing my new balance to be $184.81. Okay. So again, if you can, if you can complete a reconciliation for the bank, Doing any other reconciliations are pretty much the same thing, okay? Except the only difference between a bank reconciliation is you're going to get, um, you know, reconciliation reports on them. Where the credit card, what's going to happen is you're going to get a pop-up notice to either pay the credit card now, choose to enter a bill and pay it now, or just run a report and that's it and you call it a day, okay? So... This one's, again, same exact way that you can go ahead and enter in a reconciliation. Um, so, again, oop, I closed my home page. You can do it on your home page by clicking that reconcile button under banking on your home page. Or you can go ahead and go to banking on the menu bar, okay? Banking on your menu bar, and you can go ahead and click Reconcile, okay? So once we've done that, first things we got to do is, again, we talked about this on our first bank reconciliation. Select the account you are actually reconciling. So instead of doing the checking account this time, we are actually going to be looking at our national Visa credit card. So let's go look for that. Um, it should be a liability. Here we are in liabilities. Hmm, oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. It was up towards the top. Oh. Up towards the top. Down uh, 22,000. 22, 22. Oh, I always see 24. It's up. I don't know why it's it's like the fourth one down from the top. Oh yes, there it is. National Bank credit card. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So now that we've selected our account that we are reconciling, now it's the same thing as what we see what we did in our bank reconciliation. We recognize first things first, when are you actually reconciling this? I believe we are reconciling this for the month of February. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, 228. Yes, this is for the uh, month of February, okay? And then first things first is we got to double confirm, did, does our um, account beginning balance reflect the um, amount that we're looking at, okay? Um, and then we also have to type in our new balance here. So again, um, it says here, it says here that we should have had it last or the last statement balance in January was going to be for the two thousand one hundred and fifty two dollars and uh, zero cents. OK, so. Oftentimes, when you have a credit card company uh, or a credit card statement, you're not actually going to see the uh, beginning balance of your previous statement. Usually that isn't displayed in there um, just because of reason being is because that was last statements. So you're only going to actually look at mostly what you're going to look at this statement. So um, in this case, you may or may not have that account balance. Um, but, you know, as long as you have the new balance, you should be okay. So the new balance is going to be 184.81. Okay, so 184.81 is going to be our new account balance. All right. Things that have been charged to us is going to be finance charges, which we talked about was for $16.11. And of course, it's going to be charged on the 28th. In my, um, uh, I think this is interest, interest expense. Okay. And again, same thing, because this is a credit card that could be applied for both uh, places, it is going to be indeed an overhead. And then we can go ahead and click continue. So same thing as we've done in our reconciliation, you're going to select what has happened in your tr uh, course of transactions. So in this case, um, I have exactly in my bank state or my credit card statement, I have a total of three transactions that happened. I made a payment and I spent two, I charged the card twice, one on the 15th and one on the 20th. And they're both in the amounts of 133 and 35. And if you just look at my, um, my credit card reconciliation here, I have my payment of my $2,000 and I also have the two um, things I charged on my credit card. Now, of course, this is just a simple, you know, a simple, uh, what you would call it, a simple example. But when you have a business credit card, you can imagine it is not going to look like this. It's going to look a lot more than this. So um, you can actually have to, you can either choose to mark them all or you can just check one at a time. So by looking at that, I can see that, yes, my discrepancy is now zero. I am good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and click reconcile. So this is, then it gives you a little message here. Okay. And it's going to ask you, well, what do you want to do? You want to write a check now, or do you want to enter a bill and pay it later? Most oftentimes credit card companies give you a specific date that the, um, your minimum payment is due on. So um, usually your credit card statement has the bill attached to it with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click enter bill and pay later. So by doing that, it's going to give you the bill window here. Now, there are a couple rules that you want to understand this. So now it's going to tell me, oh, do you want your report uh, for your credit card reconciliation? I'm going to go ahead and click close. So two things that you need to know. If you plan to write a bill, now know this as a fact. If you're going to be entering in the bill for the full amount that the credit card is owed for, that means when the time comes, you're going to pay that whole entire bill off. Now, if you are planning, so that's what scenario number one. Scenario number two is if you are planning to pay whatever the minimum is, so... For example, most credit cards, if you have, if you have really good, uh, if you pay it back on time, the minimum should be at least like 
dollars or something like that, thirty dollars at most, something like that. Mine could be fifty dollars. If that's your minimum and you plan to just pay only the minimum, then that's what you're gonna record the bill as, okay? And then in the book, it also says that by you doing this, instead of having an outstanding bill, which you again、um, could potentially get, you know, accrued interest on, your credit card is gonna state that you've paid the whole entire credit card off. By it because you're transferring essentially the amount of credit in your credit card and you're transferring it into a bill, so that is the notion why it is important that you know that if you are planning to pay the credit card bill and you choose to not pay the full amount when you enter in a bill and you're planning to pay、um, fifty dollars or whatever the minimum is. Or maybe above the minimum, or you, maybe you pay every month the same exact amount. Then you're going to record the bill for the amount that you're actually going to pay for, not for the full amount. And in this case, I believe,、um, I think we just entered it in for the full amount of the one eighty four eighty one. Okay, so that means it's going to clear out the whole thing、um, from your.、Um, Your credit card, and you're just gonna pay the whole thing off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close.、Um, I'm not gonna fill out anything else because you can always modify that later. But yep, and、uh, I believe that's、uh, that's it for chapter five. Once you've done the credit card, then all you have left is bank feeds, which I will briefly talk about real quick, and then we'll go over the review questions. So the next section that we have here is going to be bank feeds. Oh, sorry. Any questions on reconcile re- reconciliation at all? They're all yes. If you can do one, you can do every single other one. All right. So we'll talk about bank feeds right now. Bank feeds are only. If you want to actually physically connect your bank account to QuickBooks, okay. So yes,、um, you can.、Uh, or I meant what I mean by that is actually connect it using the online services.、Um, so for example, if you do online banking, you can actually have QuickBooks ha-、um, save all the credentials. So then you can also、um, do your online payment using. QuickBooks. It's crazy how they integrate a lot of stuff together, and you could see how massively its potential of risk. Every time you attach more and more sensitive, sensible data to、um, QuickBooks. So, general rule of thumb is if you prefer using online banking, which right now seems to be a good idea. Okay, so online banking is just a quick and easier way. It allows you to,、um, you know, uh, receive um, updates, alerts, and you know,、um, if you, for example, that NSF check, it will notify you immediately, and it will also notify QuickBooks immediately as well. So how you set it up, it tells you right here, but I'm not going to show you just because. First off. I don't the the bank account that we're you that we are using for、um, this academy photography is fake,、um, and there is no actual website I can actually attach it to. So、um, again, you can also use this online banking to make payments directly to whoever you need to do. Maybe you need to send some money to somebody else. You could do an electronic funds transfer that way. Okay, so that's what's cool about bank feeds. But other than that, if you want to know how to set it up, it's pretty straightforward. You click the bank feeds, and it's going to pop up the you know、um, web browser, and you're just going to enter in your bank information through the QuickBooks application. So with that being said, that's pretty much bank feeds does. It's just it's just a it's just another connection. That allows you to make、um, you know banking a lot more easier and convenient because it can、um, it can link your on your bank account、um, online, allow you to track your、um, 
transactions as well, as well as also you can also uh, retrieve bank statements a lot quicker than wait for it to be mailed to. Okay, so that's that's that section there. Okay, now we can go ahead and dive right in to the review questions. Okay, number one, when beginning the uh, balance um, field on the begin reconciliation window, okay? Um, if it doesn't match, okay, what do you do? C, yes. Typically, most of these things, the longer the answer, it's actually gonna be most likely the correct answer. Um, so in this case, C says, click on the locate discrepancy uh, window and then run the report, et cetera, et cetera, yes. C is the correct answer. Number two, okay, which statement is false, all right? All right, you say D. I say D. Okay. Okay, D. Okay, both of you said D. Let's actually look at what the answer is. Okay, so number. Okay, let's let's A. You can. You can enter bank service charges using the en the enter statement charges. Yeah. Enter statement. There is no such thing as enter statement charges, and the actual it, it it's not. Uh, I mean, statement charges is actually towards when you want to enter it towards your customer. Remember when we finance our or charge our customers money. Right. So that's not in regards to us. So in this case, A is actually the incorrect answer. But let's explore D though. So if you, you can enter in bank service charges using the write a checks, um, uh, write a checks before you start your um, reconciliation. That is actually true. This is something I didn't mention because it's buried in within the reading, but you can actually enter in all of those financial charges or even the interest income. If you collected interest income, you can you can um, place that in your bank account. I mean, not bank account. You can record that interest income by either doing a journal on it or you can actually, um, uh, it could be a received payment kind of thing to update your QuickBooks. because. The bank knows that you got interest, but your your QuickBooks doesn't. So yes, you can actually enter these stuff, this information in before completing your reconciliation. That is an option you can do. Okay, so um, this one's gonna be buried somewhere in your reading, so you have to go back on um, reading um, that section on recording bank service charges. Okay. But A is the A is the correct answer in this one. Number three, when you find an error, error, erroneous um, amount on the uh, transaction while reconciling, um, how do you correct this amount? I chose A. A. D. You chose D. Correct answer is indeed number letter D. Okay, you are going to perform. Um, oh, what is it? I'm sorry. Uh, you are going to be uh, performing either or B or C. So B is uh, by double clicking on the entry and changing the value. So this is this is the section where when you do find the erroneous the error. So this is the part where you have the two options, right? You either undo the bank reconciliation or you actually have to go locate it, find it, change it, and then place it in there. So B and C is the correct, uh, B and C are the correct options, which is D. Okay. Number four, to um, properly record a voided check from a closed out accounting period 
what do you do? You see, is to find the check in the register, select it, and void it. Yes, and we talked about voiding checks in,、um, I believe, in chapter chapter four. I believe we talked about voiding checks, and that's that's exactly it. Okay.、Um, and then, if it's in a in a closed accounting period, yes, you want to be very careful when you do that because if you are running your、um, Your bank reconciliation. Make sure that's the thing that you know you purposely voided that check in the pre in the previous closed out period. Okay, number five.、Um, which of the following、um, columns cannot be displayed in the checks and payments window on the bank reconciliation window or the reconciliation window? B. B. Last, so yes. If you guys remember when we do the reconciliation window and we click this,、um, oh, oh, okay. Let's just say what ten thousand or eight, eight. Oh, oh. Okay, and we click continue. This is the window that they're talking about. Hold on, there's my mouse. This is the window they're talking about. They're asking you, well, what did you see? Do you have the only thing you'll see is a date, the check number, and who you made the payment out to? Nothing on class. Okay, so good job. All right, now it is exactly um two forty five. So Michelle, go ahead and go, and please be back. I'm gonna give you twenty minutes. So three o five. Please be back by three o five.